Okay, everyone, Steve Gonza here, making sure I'm live. I want to go through and do this uh, not that list for you. I said I was going to do this on my live yesterday. So when you're strength training, if you're going to commit to strength training, it's hard enough for a lot of runners to even start strength, working on their strength. But when they, some of them do, and in fact, a lot of them do, they end up doing the wrong stuff that doesn't even matter anyways. So I'm going to talk about that. The key here is to make your strength training runner specific. My name is Steve Geiser. I'm a physical therapist with Run Smart Online, and today I'm going to teach you what exercises you should do instead of the junky ones that most people are accustomed to. Now, real quick before I get started, these are the changes that we make to a lot of run form pieces. Um, this is certainly not a complete list, but if you want just a full done for you strength program and training plan, whether it's 5K to full marathon, check out the new Run Smart app. I put a link in this post. And uh, with that being said, let's get started. So I, I put the list up here to make sure I didn't forget like my top four or five. So clamshells, if you're new to Run Smart Online, you, uh, you probably haven't heard me rail against clamshells. But when we talk about being runner specific, the real key here, especially for you ladies out there, is that you need your strength training to be weight bearing. So when you're running down the road and you land on your right leg, the, the way the muscles work is with the foot on the ground. And then you go and do the clamshell exercise, which is laying on your side, and you kind of open up or you're do, laying on your side and you're doing the side leg lift, what you're doing in that instance is you're moving your foot on your body, but when you're running, your body's moving on your foot. So you want to train specifically. All, a lot of these exercises follow the wrong principle of specificity. If you want to be a better runner, you should run. Um, you can't you just get in the pool and start swimming if you're a runner and expect to be good because you're a good runner. You need to be specific in your training, and we want our strength training to be specific as well. So instead of clamshells, I hate clamshells. They're junk. The only time I use these is, is if someone can't bear weight because of pain or they have some surgery things going on. So instead of doing clamshells, I really encourage you guys to do speed skaters. So we use these quite a bit. If you go to our video section on this page, you can see a ton of things to do there. In fact, the things I'm going to cover here today are a great way to just work them up, work them into your warm up and cool down um, because they don't take a lot of time and they target the right muscle groups. I understand why people do clamshells. They want stronger glutes. It's just a junk exercise. Switch over to your speed skaters and that will help out quite a bit. Hamstring curls. A lot of gyms are closed right now, but as they open up, I have a lot of runners who get on the hamstring curl machine and they're either sitting, pulling down, or they're laying on their tummy and they're pulling their heels towards their butt. Remember what I just said, most of the running cycle, that is the most important part of the running cycle is when your foot's on the ground, not when you're kicking yourself in the butt running down the road. So we want to make sure that we're controlling, using our hamstrings to control our pelvis. And to do that, hamstring curls don't. They're just isolating muscle groups, right? Never isolate. You do not need to isolate muscle groups unless you're bodybuilding or you are injured and you need to. Um, in fact, most people who are injured still don't need to isolate. We want these things to work together. So hamstring curls, instead of doing that, you want to strengthen your hamstrings, turn them on, go right to a deadlift. Just watch your low back with this one. But a deadlift, not only does it go right after your hamstrings, it goes after your low back, it goes after your glutes. You can do a single leg deadlift and go after your balance as well. So now you start using multiple muscle groups, which have a lot of benefits as well. So next one, knee extensions, laying on your, or sitting in the machine and kicking up. Oh my God. First of all, really, really bad for your knees because believe it or not, you have more pressure on your knees um, when you're kicking a light, uh, when you're kicking a heavy weight up than when you're running. In, uh, underneath your kneecap. And the reason is, is because the knee is meant to be used with your foot on the ground. When you land from a running cycle, the quad has to catch you with your foot on the ground. It's not doing, you know, uh, whatever this dance move is. You probably can't even see my leg where you're just kicking out. And let me think that probably is a dance move. Uh, unless I'm at a wedding and had a couple too many. <laughs> so uh, knee extension machine, complete junk, particularly if you have bad knees. Get away from that as much as possible. If you want to isolate the front of your leg, you want to work on um, your, your, your thigh strength, your quad strength, there's a couple options here. I like doing forward lunges or, or 45 lunges, so forward lunge. Sometimes that can be tough on the knee, and, and you can, there's ways to get around that. You can go to the side and do a side lunge. Or a forward reach is another great way to target the front of your thigh and use it in a way that is a running manner instead of the stupid knee extension machine. So stay away from this. 
Um, leg press, I'll also say wall sits here, you know, sitting against the wall and just firing into the, into the wall. You want to be dynamic in it. In fact, this is a disc herniation machine for most people. So if you have a, a bad low back, this is a good way to come see me in the office is by doing a bunch of leg press. Um, so we want to stay away from the leg press as well. Guess what you want to do here? Stand up and do a squat. When you can do a squat, you're going to be putting your foot on the ground. You're going to be firing your low back. You can hang on to some weights. Um, but a squat, way more functional than laying on your back and pushing a weight towards the ceiling. Stay away from the leg press. And, and for that matter, even the leg press machine where you, you rack like, this weight at the gym and you're doing your squats with it, free weights allow you to balance. They give you better control around your joints and far, far better than a leg press or a wall sit. So here's our goods, or our do's, and here's our don'ts. I'm gonna write don'ts and goods. So anyone jumping on right now watching this uh, probably has no idea what's going on, but that's okay. Um, finally, the hip abductor and adductor machine. For those that don't know, you sit on your butt, you eat, and you, with your with your legs bent, you're opening your legs and closing your legs back and forth. One exercise you're pulling towards and the weight comes back. The other one is you're pushing away and opening your legs and coming back. Junk. Isolation of muscle groups is not what you want to do as a runner. You want to fire muscles together the way they use them in life and the way that you use them when you run. So instead of doing the hip abductor adductor machine, we love our diagonal, I hate spelling diagonal, diagonal, uh, rotational, these are two, three different types, and side lunges. Lunges are going to load your glute. Hopefully I don't run into my sons here. Let me make sure I'm still on the screen. Um, so diagonal, rotational, and side lunges are far, far better than doing this crap. And I know the gyms are closed, but they will reopen again. Guess what? A lot of this stuff can be done on your warm-up, your cool-down. Add them to a strength day. Take these, like these three, and they go into your strength at certain days. Take those, they go into your strength at a certain day. These should absolutely leave anyone's strength program. A, they're not helping you. B, some of them are actually probably increasing your risk for injury, disc herniation, runner's knee, anterior knee pain comes from this one. Um, so a lot of junky things. You can pull your groin on that one because you're isolating. So just be smart about your strength training and just know, and this is the only thing you have to take away from this video, is you want to be runner specific when you're strength training. You want your exercises to help your running and help you in life. The good thing about runner specific exercises is they're also life specific exercises. So they can really help you uh, in the yard, playing with the kids, doing everything that you need to do. Now, if you want to help and just get full programs, uh, we work these exercises into a couple of different programs, including our base three or base six program that that intertwines in the training plans if, you're, if you start one of those. If you want help, you want full workouts, you want to learn more about these exercises, check out the link in the post in the Run Smart app. We have it all in there. But no, these are your don'ts and these are your goods, people. These are the goods and the do's, the do's and the don'ts. All right, I uh, hope everyone has a great night. I uh, hope this is helpful. And uh, I'll be back probably tomorrow to talk a little bit more and maybe even show you guys some of these if you want. Um, let me know in the comments. Have a great night. Bye, guys.